Hello everyone, my name is Chantal Flores and I'm 15 years old and today I'm going to discuss what exactly is fatty phylum terminal and tethered cord syndrome in case you're wondering. And if you're watching this, most likely you know of a loved one who's just been recently diagnosed or maybe you've been diagnosed and you're looking for just a little bit more information. So I hope this is helpful. So first of all, tethered cord syndrome is a pretty broad spectrum of a rare neurological disease which affects the spinal cord. So if you don't know, the spinal cord rests within the spinal column or the vertebrae and it's usually free floating. So it moves as you move and as you grow. So with tethered cord syndrome, as the name suggests, this spinal cord ends up being tethered or attached to the spinal column where it shouldn't be attached. And this is usually caused by either normal tissue that thickens or abnormal tissue that grows and develops around or in the spinal cord. So tethered cord syndrome, what, how would you know you have it? So it can be hard to diagnose tethered cord syndrome because the range of symptoms, since it's in the spinal cord, it can range from anywhere from neurological cognitive symptoms to anything from joint pain, and it's usually associated with so many other diseases, such as Chiari malformation, um, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, that it can be hard to diagnose without proper imaging. So usually, diagnosis comes from an MRI with contrast dye, so that they can easily see what exactly is the tissue or what exactly is wrong with the spinal cord. So, in my case, I was diagnosed just last year through an MRI with contrast dye. I was diagnosed with fatty phylum terminal, a variant of tethered cord syndrome. And in my case, I was having a lot of neurological symptoms that had to do with be below the waist. So for me, my diagnosis came pretty late after my symptoms because not only was I afraid to tell the doctor about what was going on, but also at the time, they were just trying to find everything that could possibly be wrong, and they didn't really think it could be a spinal cord problem until they decided to have an MRI done, just to check in case, for some reason, it was a neurological issue. And in my case, they found that I had fatty phylum terminal. So what exactly is fatty phylum terminal? So because it's a variant of tethered cord syndrome, it's a piece of tissue that abnormally attaches the spinal cord to the base of the spine where it shouldn't be attached that way. So in my case, the, it affected the phylum, which is a strand of tissue within the spinal cord itself. And in my case, usually the phylum, which is also free-floating within the spinal cord, um, it became thicker than usual and attached really tightly to the base of my spine. So this caused my spinal cord to not be able to move as it should. And as I was still young and growing, um, my spine itself couldn't grow the way it was supposed to. So I developed scoliosis, which is curvature of the spine. Um, and so, once they realized that fatty, the phytophyllum version that I had was a phylum thicker than normal and very tight, they thought that my fatty phylum might be affecting and the cause of my symptoms that ranged from a whole bunch of neurological issues. So in my case, they decided that I should have surgery before it grew any thicker and before the tissue um, kept getting tighter and tighter on my spinal cord and causing more neurological issues. Now, surgery isn't recommended for every single patient of tethered cord syndrome. It's usually based on whether or not they have symptoms, because if they don't have symptoms, sometimes tethered cord syndrome can be perfectly fine to leave in a healthy adult. And in other cases, if the symptoms are major or if the doctors are afraid that symptoms could get worse over time, such as if it's a young child or an infant that is still growing, they'll manage to do the surgery at a younger age or at a certain age where they believe it'll help prevent future symptoms. So if this isn't your first time researching a little into tethered cord syndrome or fatty phylum terminal, and you've been introduced to a community, um, of people who also suffer from these diseases, you might be 
um, acclimating yourself to some new terms that you're not exactly sure of, such as zebras, giraffes, and spoonies. So a little bit about, about what exactly does giraffes mean, zebras, and spoonies. So a giraffe, as you know, is an animal known for its long vertebrae. And so as tethered cord syndrome is known as a spinal cord disease, they associate the giraffe, known for its long neck and spine, as the symbol for tethered cord syndrome. So a lot of people will use the giraffe emoji as a way to signify tethered cord syndrome since it's really hard to find the ribbon, an awareness ribbon, for tethered cord syndrome. And fun fact, the awareness ribbon for tethered cord syndrome happens to be the beige giraffe print ribbon. So, coincidence? Now on the other hand, zebras, similar to the giraffes, are also used as a symbol among the rare disease community. And since tethered cord syndrome is a rare disease, it's commonly used in the same setting. So zebras are also an animal, and they're coming from a common phrase used in the medical field, which says, when you hear hoofbeats, think of a horse, not a zebra, which is saying that when you see something a symptom that seems like it could be something simple, you think of that simple thing rather than what could be beyond it, which is thinking of a whole bunch of rare diseases that could possibly be, but aren't usually. So in the case of rare disease patients, they, we usually get misdiagnosed because um, a doctor will immediately go to the most common causes of these symptoms rather than the rare diseases, which makes sense because if rare diseases are so rare, chances are somebody's not likely to have them. Okay, so we've covered zebras and giraffes, but what exactly are spoonies? So spoonies are those in the rare disease community and tethered cord syndrome communities that refer to themselves as spoonies because they only have so many spoons or amounts of energy to use each day. So you can think of spoons as a spoonful of, say, sugar. And in this case, sugar is the amount of energy that needs to be used and that they have. So in the case of most spoonies in the rare disease community and tethered cord syndrome communities, they only feel like they have so many spoons that they can use because their energy amount is so limited. So in the case of most spoonies, they'll refer to themselves as spoonies because they feel like they're low on spoons and they have to keep track of exactly what they should do in their day that won't take all their energy. So a lot of people will say that, oh, well, a shower could take two spoons of energy on a certain day and a walk outside could take about five spoons. And they might say that they only have ten spoons to use. So that's kind of a short glimpse at what a spoonie is. And I hope this video in general was really helpful for you if you're looking for a little bit more information. And if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to type them down in the comments below and I'll try to answer as fast as I can. And also, if you have any feedback or you have other um, video ideas that you'd like to see, please let me know and I'll see what I can do to make those happen. So thank you for watching.